Oh, I see his picture. <laughs> oh, how I wish he were here. <laughs> My two sisters and I called him Daddy. My mother, Ruby, called him her Johnny. Sports writers and Cardinal fans called him Pepper Martin, the wild horse of the Osage. My daddy always... <laughs> My daddy always referred to himself as Johnny Leonard Roosevelt Pepper Martin. <laughs> he played 1,189 Major League Baseball games, and in every one of them, he wore a St. Louis Cardinal uniform. <laughs> In behalf of the entire Martin family, I want to thank the St. Louis Cardinals organization for honoring our father with this induction into the Cardinals Hall of, uh, Museum Hall of Fame. And to have him in the same class of 2017 with Mark McGuire and Tim McCarver is just makes it even more special. Most of you here today probably never saw my daddy play. Actually, my sisters, Aline, Alice, and I did not see him play all that many major league games because we were so young at the beginning of his career with the Cardinals. We saw him primarily at the beginning of his, uh, we saw him primarily as a minor league manager of, for 13 years after he concluded his major league career. And we have many good memories about those years. Daddy simply loved the game of baseball. He played with great enthusiasm, passion, and reckless abandon that caught the eye of managers, teammates, fans, sports writers. Probably nothing better illustrates this than his famous head first slide and his nickname Pepper. I heard him say more than once, he would have played, the game, played baseball for nothing, just for the privilege of playing the game. <laughs> Daddy's team won three World Series while he was a Cardinal, and his World Series batting record was a healthy 418. His greatest year as a Cardinal was 1931, when the Cardinals upset the Philadelphia Athletics in seven games, and, and Daddy's World Series batting average was an even 500. <laughs> a record that stood for years, along with his record for stolen bases. Also in 1931, the Associated Press began a new award to recognize the American Athlete of the Year, and Daddy was the first recipient. <laughs> Two years later, on May 5th, he would become the 94th player in Major League Baseball history to hit the cycle in a game against the Philadelphia Phillies. Daddy was selected for four of the first five All-Star games, including the one in 1933, and batted number one in the lineup. His sweater from this, that first All-Star team, his 1930, uh, we've donated, pardon me, his sweater from the first All-Star team and his 1931 and 44 series rings, World Series rings were donated by our family to the Cardinal Hall of Fame Museum earlier this summer. In 1956, 
Daddy wrote an article in which he told the story of his very first at-bat in a World Series. I faced Walter Moses Grove, a great left-hander. I was nervous, tense, and scared half out of my wits. There were thousands of people there wanting the Cardinals to win. I was the sixth place batter, and when I went to bed, bat, I was completely frustrated. Two men were on base, two out, and I felt by guilt what failure would mean. I backed out of the botter's box, knelt down, got some dirt, and at the same time asked God to help me. When I faced Lefty Grove a second or two later, my fears had left me, and I missed hitting a home run by about a foot. It just seemed to me that God guided me with that bat. I believe he helps anyone who asks for help. Daddy, thank you. Daddy was truly a free spirit, and along with his many accomplishments on the field, he's remembered for his annex, his sense of humor, and practical jokes, and his contribution to the camaraderie inside the clubhouse as a member of the infamous Gas House Gang and organizer of the Mississippi Mudcats Band in which Daddy played the guitar and Dizzy Dean played the harmonica. After his retirement as player and manager, Daddy loved working with young boys in summer baseball camps. The last three years of his life, he was the public relations manager for the Tulsa Oilers, and even then, he was known to run the bases with those players. Despite his accomplishments in a somewhat brief major league career, baseball was not the most important thing in my daddy's life. He dearly loved my mother, my sister Aileen, and me, but he so wanted a son. When our mother delivered my baby sister, Alice Jane, it was during a double header, the doctor called the ballpark and left this message. You're the father of a beautiful six-pound baby girl. <laughs> Daddy later told Mother that when he came up to bat with tears in his eyes, he prayed, that's all right, God. I'll make musicians out of all of them. <laughs> and then he hit a home run over the center field bleachers. A little bit. <laughs> One final accomplishment of Daddy's that is little known in the role he played in the early years and formation of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. A neighbor and friend, Don McLennan, was a basketball coach at Eastern Oklahoma a and in the late 1940s and early 50s. And he had a dream of using sports as a platform to share his faith. He and Daddy would often discuss this dream, and in 1954, FC, the FCA was organized with Daddy and 18 other professional athletes being recognized. Two years later, in Estes Park, Colorado, the FCA held its first national summer conference and Daddy, with another famous cardinal, was one of the speakers. The FCA was the final connection for Daddy with his old manager, the man who signed him into a cardinal's contract and one of the greatest Cardinals of all time, Mr. Branch Rickey. Mm -hmm. Who became an early supporter and benefactor of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Over the years, sports writers and reporters would ask Daddy, Pepper, what's your goal in life? Perhaps they thought his reply would be to win the World Series, be elected in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. His answer was always the same. My goal is to get to heaven. And our family knows without any doubt that he achieved that goal on March 5th, 1995 because of his faith and the life he led as a follower of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you.
One final story about Daddy. Mother and Daddy had been a part of starting a new Baptist church, and one evening there was an ice cream social after the service. The pastor who had preached really long sermon asked Daddy to pray to end the service. Daddy, who dearly loved homemade ice cream, wait a minute, I skipped it, wait a minute, I blew it. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't blow it. Daddy, who dearly loved homemade ice cream, <laughs> could sometimes use long words in his prayer. He knew God knew what they're meaning if anybody else didn't. But this time when he prayed, he said, Lord, bless this service and may the ice cream not be melted. <laughs> Upon his death, it, the Tulsa World newspaper published a beautiful cartoon of daddy sliding into heavens, into home plate in heaven. And of course he was depicted as sliding head first. Thank you again to the Cardinal Organization and everyone associated with today's ceremony. <laughs> Daddy would have loved this time with Cardinal players and fans, and who knows, he might have even planned some practical joke for the ceremony. Our family is confident that both he and Branch Rickey are watching from the best seats in the house. <laughs>